And let's go. Hey, welcome everybody. This is BNP Weekly, episode 79. It is 14th of April, 2020. And once again, we have a visitor within this show. But before we go there, let's actually try to get this properly started always. So let's introduce the show and who we are and then go to the visitors. So welcome everybody. This is the BNP Weekly, uh, where we talk about uh, the latest development and news from the Microsoft and from the community around the Microsoft 365 development, or maybe more specifically the non-Windows areas of the of the world. My name is Cesar Yubonen. I'm a principal program manager from the OneDrive SharePoint platform team. And with me as a co-host is Waldek. Who are you? Hi everybody, my name is Valde Masegas, I'm Head of Product at Rancor, and today with us is a guest, nobody less, yes. no one less than Albert Jan Schott. Hi Albert. Hi, Welcome. thanks. Nice having me. So, uh, my name is Albert Jan, most people know me as Epi, so I'll probably be Epi for the rest of the show. I'm CTO at Portiva, and we're a Dutch company focusing on business productivity with Office 365 and a bit of Azure. That sounds good. How, how big is the Portiva? How many people are in the Ooh, company? We're around 100 people and most of us focus us on, well, the Office 365 or Microsoft 365 platform. Um, and we're doing, um, well, mainly business productivity. We do some custom development. We do some adoption. So everything around the business productivity stack. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Uh, well, what's the what's the impact of the current uh, situation for you as a partner to start a career? Mm. Study? So, obviously, working from home is a thing. But uh, what about from a partner specific perspective? So, so what we actually see happening is that we were pretty quick for working from home. I mean, obviously, we've got all the stuff in place, and we could. Um, with with a day notice, we could easily switch over to start working from home. What we do see happening is that some of our customers were ready, some weren't. So they were currently making sure that they can actually go to uh, proper channels to make sure everything is working. And um, well, it's actually inter interesting to see that uh, there are customers who are actually facing really, really big problems because of this whole situation. And others are just like, Okay, um, it happens. Let's let's make the most of it. So for yeah. us as a partner, we see that some projects were actually dropped. Others were started to make sure that we could implement teams or we could implement a solution to quickly create teams or, or collaboration spaces. Yeah. Uh, we really love the template you guys have, um, the crisis communication template. So we've been doing that at some customers. Okay. Uh, we've been doing uh, some power apps. We've been doing some power automate. So. Yeah, it's, um, it's different, but so far it's, uh, well, interesting to see what's happening, actually. Yeah, yeah. And, and most likely of the situation, everybody is waiting for when will this situation go away. And, and sure, yeah. it will take a while, but how will the world look like after that? So it's, yeah, it's really yeah, interesting. That's an interesting, uh, well, topic to think about because, yeah. well, you yeah. see most of the countries are now postponing uh, or delaying going open again or going full yeah. normal. So it's interesting to see how long this will actually take before yeah. we go back to a new normal. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and, I, and actually the, um, there's also this interesting thing, like I think there's a big group that expects like we will get back to where where we used to be. Like there, there will be like, okay, so next week on Monday, like everything is done. We're back to the full thing. As, as it was, but somewhere I su suspect that it will be like gradually going back to working, but in a different way. And it will be more of a gradual change as opposed to hard cut. Okay, and now we're back, yeah. you know? Yeah. But oh, well, is, my God. I know, well, like you're already working from home, Vesa, you're working from home as well. Um, I used to spend around 80% of my time working at clients or visiting clients. Yeah. And now all of a sudden it's like the new normal that you just have your call at nine, start working and have a few teams meeting or well, have multiple teams meetings throughout the day. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, it works and it's interesting to see that once we are allowed to travel again, what's going to be the balance. I, I don't think I will spend the 80% of my time at clients anymore. For me, it makes more sense to do at least a few days at home, but yeah. who knows? It's yeah. 
And I, I think that it, it really forces then companies actually on accepting the fact that, hey, we need to trust the people and, and we need to figure out alternative ways of not sneaking behind of their back and watching are they actually working, rather measure their actual work and measure their achievements or measure their results and in a different ways, which, which is actually how it should be. Because um, in, in any office work, there's so every single person should have a reason why they exist there, right? And therefore, that reason, whatever it is, should be immeasurable. So then you can set your expectations and measure, are we actually getting there or not? So, but sure, especially in IT business, this is much more easier because, well, we build stuff typically yeah. or we enable stuff. So we it's We talk different. about stuff. Yes, we talk about stuff, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we don't necessarily do that. No, never mind. Um, <laughs> now, now let's get back on the. <laughs> you're a CTO, so CTO's yeah. business is to talk about stuff, not really to do the stuff, right? I'm a principal PM. I'm not allowed to touch code. I'm, I'm allowed to talk about stuff. So. <laughs> well, but that is also an interesting thing, right? Because like, if you if you're tasked to talk about stuff, you can talk talk about stuff from anywhere and you could even argue that sure. Sure. Not, not needing to physically be at a place allows you to talk even more because you can have single call with the customer here. So geography is no longer an issue, meaning you can be more or you can do more, more of these talks or meetings if only the other side is let's say convinced that it's also okay to, to talk through a screen as opposed to like really meet in person. Yeah, and, and and if you have the proper video channels, if you have the proper gear, I think it's fine. It it gets close to the model where you can actually face to face talk to a person. Uh, but it, it obviously there are differences. There's a massive differences. But as an example, in my case, I I can't remember when I met my manager physically. <laughs> so <laughs> probably ignite actually, but uh, it's probably going to be a more than a year considering what's now happening. And we will not be meeting uh, meeting yeah. uh, face to face, but it doesn't matter because it's it's all about making stuff happen uh, and 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 measure and, and being measured with, through different channels and then having these video chats uh, with people. To be fair, right now one point actually which happened last week, which was interesting, I think it was also public. Um, it's going to be even less on the videos video meetings because we got 12 weeks of parental leave in Microsoft every single employee, which is like wow. To, to address uh, the possible, if there's a need for you to stay at home, well, we'll say everybody stays at home, but to concentrate on family and things. And yeah. 12 weeks is quite a lot, actually. So well, but I mean, interesting to see how it impacts. Point, it only, but, but it only proves the impact of it, right? Like, and like, sure, there are folks who choose to, let's say, in a way, stick their, their head in the sand and do as if it's new normal, like we've been doing that for a long time. But like, if your kids are at home and your part partner cannot do their work or or they can can do work, then you have to find a way to balance it out, right? Because like somebody needs Absolutely. to take care of your kids, and and ideally you don't want them to see sit in front of screen the whole day. So you want to be so so you will be actively engaged with them, but which requires time, and you cannot be yeah. like typing stuff here and then work with your kids there. Like yeah, it doesn't the, work. The like interruption right? so, doesn't work like that. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly right. So, um, so I like it. It makes perfect sense, and I think it's great to see that Microsoft really scales to that and has uh, um, uh, the bandwidth to offer that, right? Because if you yeah, are sure. startup, small, small company, like not everybody has the bandwidth to do it, right? Absolutely. So I think that that scale is great. That to see that Microsoft chooses to, you could even say, spend some of their revenue on doing exactly that, like putting people yeah. first. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, super proud of that decision. To be fair, I don't have the, the luxury to be able to actually take advantage of that, but that's a separate <laughs> discussion. So <laughs> it's, the, the, one of the problems, at least for me, is that a lot of the stuff, and, and, and I think a lot of the, the IT people can relate on this, the stuff what we do feels like a hobby, but then yeah. at the same time, you you have a lot of things which you deliver for some of the other people. So so if you would actually be away for two weeks, that would have a catastrophic impact for the other people who are dependent on you to do things, which shouldn't be the case because there sh should not be a single point of failure, but there is quite often. 
so well, even I mean, in the Russian, and, yeah. well, but I guess even then, right? You could say, well, like if there was really a need for somebody to drop, like it's like. I think there is difference between somebody is away for a week and they'll be back versus somebody is gone. Because if your team would would, would be now re, reshuffled, I'm sure that it's exactly as you say, like the whole team wouldn't stop. Like the job of that person who is now gone, they would be reshuffled, remanaged, and then somebody, and then everyone would chip in to do a little bit of like Absolutely. that person would do this. Like, right, right, so the work, the work wouldn't stop. But if there is a temporary thing, I think it's just easier to say, you know what, let's stop for a week than try to reprioritize the whole work of, of everybody else for a week because it ju- yeah. is just a week and whether that's a week or two weeks i think it's still um it's it's not as big i wanted to get, get back to what to what, what you said about not meeting your manager like, there's this interesting thing because i think that for a big part like the fact that you are not going to meet him in person is not as important because you met him in person once in the past sure sure yeah and i have and I, and, and I have exactly the same experience when I joined at Rancor. Like I would have my first interview in person, but then I wouldn't see my manager for in person for I don't know how yep. how long, maybe yep. half, half a year. But just the, the first thing, like you want to very much like meet the person, talk to them face to face because it's just different. Yep. Yeah. But I guess like true. like nowadays, I I I see folks getting new jobs, and apparently that's also. Oh, okay, right? So, Just do it uh, video, yeah. We actually got three new hires at the beginning of this month. Yeah, and I saw it. So yeah. The only thing that we met them for was to hand them over a laptop and a phone because, well, at least you need a laptop. But yeah. after that, it was like everything else is going to be Teams meetings and there you go, good luck. And yeah. obviously that's a, a shift for both us as a company as well as new people starting. But, well, it, it's working out pretty okay. Yeah, we had some new people and engineers joining SPFX team as well. So yeah. it's a, it's an interesting way of getting new people and then their faces in the in the screen. So, yeah. um, but I think it's a fair game. So, absolutely. Yeah. Good. Uh, let's get back on the time before the corona, um, the before and after. Well, we don't know oh, what's so going to happen. 2019, what did I do then? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Time before corona, yeah. like when When was it exactly? <laughs> yeah. I can't remember anything from that. Um, if you think about, Abby, your history and, and, and the, let's say the transition uh, from the, the on-premises to the cloud, any, any learnings uh, from your, let's say, previous path? You actually joined Ooh. through another a merger. Uh, with yeah. Portiva, right? Um, and I, I do know that uh, Waldeck used to work for the previous company as well yeah. and building on-premises yeah. stuff. But yeah. what's your kind of, a, if you have like three to five tips for uh, companies looking into transforming uh, to cloud, because they now have to, because the on-premises is right now pretty much gone, um, as a yeah. first effort, what would be the, the things to concentrate on? So I, I started out, and it feels like ages ago, I think it's already 12 years or something like that, started out with SharePoint on-prem 2007 and a bit of 2000. It was 12 then. So, yeah. yeah. It's uh, <laughs> well, um, a slightly different time. Uh, yeah. the, the biggest thing for me that was like, like an eye-opener is that back then when you started developing, everything was or had to be Microsoft. So the only way you could actually build something was on a Microsoft virtual machine or running a Microsoft server, running Visual Studio, doing stuff with the DLLs. And it's, well, it worked. Uh, I'm not gonna say it was a bad model or a good model. I mean, it worked. It worked. um, It was different. It was was different, right? (laughs) And and the shift now, the, the, the thing that I'm still, Struggling might not be the right word, but I'm still trying to figure out is there are so many things you can do nowadays with all those kind of different frameworks that it's really hard to come up with a best practice. And when I started out, it was this 500 page book that explained this is what you should do and this is the best practice. If you don't do this, you're a bad developer. And nowadays it's like, oh, I can do this in seven different JavaScript frameworks. What would make sense today? So yeah. Um, I really love the, the open source attitude and the fact that I can do things in different ways. Um, so my biggest tip would be just 
pick one and there's not necessarily something that's either better or worse. Pick something, work with it, and at least let your whole company work with the same way uh, or the same code base and not try to shift it every three weeks. Uh, there are a few articles out there that explain that, for instance, your front end framework is something you'll switch out every year. Fine, but no more than once a year because there's no way your developers can handle that. Yeah. Um, think about doing stuff in the cloud is slightly different than running on prem because on prem you could just say pull in another server and go ahead. Now you actually have to think about things being throttled or things being used by everyone in the cloud. What is throttling? Just, what? What's your that? five users. What? Yeah. What? The throttling no. thing is quite <laughs> actual right now. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that, that's a, that's a one as well, and yeah, I think that's basically it. Other than that, things change, but still say the same, right? You still yeah. can build business productivity solutions. You can build your custom applications, um, and the only change then is either calling the graph or calling a REST endpoint instead of doing DLLs. But yeah, yeah. It's pretty much the same. Well, that's actually a really interesting point. So one one kind of a point you, you mentioned earlier that obviously you do some of the Azure stuff as well, but then business productivity is the core of Portiva. And why is it why is Portiva or your work concentrates on the Microsoft 365 and not only on Azure? What's the added value for Microsoft 365 um, as as a partner? Oh, that's actually a good classic question. question. So, yeah. <laughs> so we, we started out as a um, a company doing only SharePoint stuff, and yeah. then we shifted to Office 365, obviously. And it all started with just doing or creating SharePoint sites, making sure they would look pretty, making sure there were some web parts that the end users required for whatever reason, doing stuff with internet solutions, doing stuff with provisioning solutions, and the basic stuff, right? But what you actually see happening there is that it becomes more and more things running in Azure as well. But the whole Azure platform is that broad and that that's complex where you can do basically anything. So we said we really want to focus on the primary process within our customers because that's where we have experience, that's where we actually can make a difference. And it's interesting to see that you start out by just doing or building your web parts or building your front end and things like Azure or um, enabling AI stuff. And then all of a sudden you're also doing infrastructure and you're also doing identity and you're also doing security. And yeah. we are not there yet to say we only do Azure or we are going to do Azure like with another hundred people. Uh, but you see that the worlds are converging more and more to well, yeah. a cloud first world. So it, it makes sense to do more with infrastructure and we'll probably do that. But for now, it's always focused on the primary process within a client. Yeah, makes perfect sense. Yeah, I, I think that's that's one of the, if you think about Microsoft, there's the Azure organization, then there's the Microsoft 365 organization. And one of the things what, what we're still having as we need to kind of work on is the, is the value proposition for partners on the Microsoft 365. The Azure side of the house, super clear uh, because hey it's set of tools uh, you you use them based on whatever is the design and everything else but what is the value proposition for partner ecosystem in the microsoft 365 that's the interesting question um, oh yes and no i mean like it depends like really where, where you draw draw the line because if you look at azure like if you imagine you would you would see it as a hierarchy right all the way down there's a vm so basically yep. a place for you to run your code but still, like how how you access it. So then you move up, and and then you you would think about things like web apps. So so more more paths. Then yeah. you would say, okay, but what does this this thing do? Where does it store the data? And then you will move up yeah. to things like storage, cognitive services, and basically adding features to the applications you build. But they yeah. they still need to be exposed somewhere. Yep. So, but that that leaves you very much in Azure. But then you want to integrate stuff in M365 where customers actually spend their time because they will not go to. I mean, sure, you could build a web app and that could be their target. But you sure. can say, well, we could go about it two ways. We can go, we can we can ask you to go to this place, or we will come to you. So if you yep. spend your day in Outlook, why not have an Outlook add-in that integrates in the the context where you are? If you sure. work, if 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 you choose to. 
spend your time in Teams, why not have a bot or or personal app, right? So it's basically bringing all the different things you build that have to land somewhere, that operates somewhere in, in Azure to the context where the user is, whether that's Outlook, yeah. that's Teams, Share, SharePoint or whatnot, or phone, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's the same with, with AI, right? I mean, yeah. AI is not going to be, here you've got a model, good luck with it, play around with it. It's going to be, you've got data or you've got a process and you want the results from your model injected yep. into the process that you're working with or the yep. content. Yeah, exactly. And, and the and, process and, and, has an entry point, which is a UX. And then yeah. that, that was pretty exactly. well put so, actually, uh, while they can't, uh, you can, sure, you can implement your own custom UX, absolutely in Azure, using then the bits and pieces of Azure, but then you're building everything from scratch rather than and getting then, that exactly, integrated in the Exactly. Process. And then there is also this another aspect of it, like processes the way and the way you work often uh, will touch on an artifact, like a file, like yeah. a user, a contact, and all these things already exist in 365. So yeah. why would you build your own CRM? Why would you build your own document repo with checking in files and versioning you have yeah. all of that already yeah. so you could you could you could see m365 that it brings it basically raises the bar allowing you like offering you a really rich set of features in which into which you can tap and then build more rich ex, or rich, richer experiences on top of that as opposed yeah. to like reinventing the wheel let me upload a file handle a file checking out the version yeah. No, like that is already available. Like move on. Now, now, just brainstorming on this exact uh, thought of mind. Uh, if you think about, for example, the Windows or let's say an Apple uh, operating system, you don't actually write the file system, file system for those anymore. You don't because you you take advantage of what is actually available. So yeah, there should is we a actually file, start to, folder? Yeah, exactly. That's that's and then that's in in the cloud world. That's your OneDrive and and a SharePoint and those other yeah. things where you just store stuff and then magically it's, it's somewhere. Now, should we then start calling Microsoft 365? as a operating system because it actually provides you a set of services um, as well, a you whole. could you could you and know, I think and I think it's very eye opening <laughs> I, th I think it's very eye opening when you talk to people who aren't really tech savvy because to them yeah. it's very opaque like what what it is right they they go to outlook and they find everything that they need for their work in there. They go to, teams. They go to, they teams. Go to they their teams. internet. They go to teams. They there go are to teams. people who work in out. There are people who they, they go to teams. into my they eyes, my eyes, my eyes. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> teams. <laughs> right? Um, so, so there are folks basically who go to these places and they have everything that they need in there. And basically like to them the same way, like they don't really care about the OS. They start a laptop and it just works. And they don't really care about like everything that's behind the screen, like what is the, the file system and files, how they're arranged on a disk, like that is irrelevant. And basically yeah. the same way here, like at some point, like they will, they will move up the, the, and the, layer. Um, yeah. the hierarchy. Yeah, exactly. And like, and more and more, more of it, like it's going to be just like, they will just assume that things are there. They are on the phone and they assume they can access the files and the email yeah. and messages and, and it's all there. And where it's coming from, that is irrelevant. Yeah. Right? So you could you could you could see it as basically, and I think in a way, I might have heard that on a few occasions. It's basically the fabric that spans across your daily work, right? Yeah. It basically under underpins your daily work, whether you're on a phone, behind a desk, or on a go or whatnot. Well, you see that with with the latest additions to the stack. I mean. We call it Microsoft 365. You can now do things in the graph that ends up in your Windows 10 timeline. I can install OneDrive and it will sync my photos from iOS to my OneDrive. So yep. it's, it's becoming more and more a full spectrum of services that- Exactly. Yeah, yep. like you said, a fabric. Yeah. yeah. Which is basically what we've been telling for many, many years. But now we're really, really starting to say that in practice. And then the COVID situation is forcing everybody to really kind of uh, embrace it and yeah. really go for it. Um, and obviously then that that increases the usage of cloud, which then unfortunately causes some level of a throttling because uh, we can't keep up with the capacity um, which, which we're working on uh, and it's getting much better. Uh, so there was a small, it's a bit a small spike a few weeks back, so <laughs> sm small one. <laughs> yeah, there was this nice blog post about a thousand percentage increase of use. Yep. That sounded yep. interesting. 
Yeah, I think it was 750 yeah. or something. Yeah. Yeah. In certain well, areas. It depends yeah. how you it look at it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. exactly. But so, yeah, but it's cool yeah. because it seems like this dream of every re PM to see, like, whoa, they use it spikes. They use it spikes. Like, oh, crap, it's still spikes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, stop it. Stop it. Yeah, yeah. stop growing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's an interesting well, challenge or interesting. It's it's a big win, obviously, at the same time, but it's a win with a cost, yeah. and cost with win with the cost as well. Um, so, so, yeah, it's 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 an interesting world. Um, anybody, nobody could have actually predict uh, this properly uh, no. in the previous. Well, episode. actually, Bill Gates in 2017, <laughs> he actually kind yeah, of well, did. <laughs> there were multiple people who were basically predicting that something like this will happen. But what is the overall no impact? No that's a for that's it. Exactly yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah. So, but and yes, thing, you could actually it, have. Yeah. You, Basement full of stuff waiting, but nobody is actually doing that. Uh, so, or maybe some well, people there do. Are, there, are, there are folks who do, like preppers, like there's a whole community of them apparently. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I think the interesting thing is that, like, sure, like gro- growth like that is very u- unique, right? And as you said, like, there's no way to really prep for, 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 for that because nobody will really spend the money at that scale, like buy things just for them to sit there. But, yeah. Like, like the despite the let's say some uh, decreased experience for a limited time, like in a way, I have the confidence that if there is a company that is that is able to pull it off, like to sustain growth at that scale over time, Microsoft is is that company. Yeah. Because if this change is here to stay. Like sure, at some point the growth where will decline and it will not be yeah. as steep anymore. Yep. Yeah. But then Microsoft, I have the confidence that Microsoft will be able to raise the bar and offer service at that level using the quality that we had in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And and obviously, so some of this, even the, even some of the growth, it, it actually the growth might actually go slightly down whenever the situation is resolved. Because yeah. right now, a lot of this uh, growth, well, not most of it, but a lot of the growth definitely is coming also from EDU, yeah. because EDU uh, basically is free, and then every single school is now uh, in in remote schooling, and our yeah. kid is in a second grade, but they already have virtual classes and all of that stuff. So. Uh, mainly still homeschooling, uh, which is I'm the math math teacher, so uh, <laughs> any, um, an English teacher. Um, I'm not sure with the English accent, but uh, <laughs> um, but yeah. So whenever the 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 schools will get to a normal, more normal status, and um, which yeah. eventually will happen, that will mean that the EDU will actually slightly go down, most likely. But then at the same time, now the schools have then the skills and knowledge of you using this tooling, uh, whatever is their chosen tooling, um, um, because there's obviously Google is offering similar kind of EDU packages and many, many others as well. Um, but they now have then the readiness of doing remote stuff as well, which is good. So as a forced yeah. readiness, yeah. but still. So. And I was actually listening, there, there was a video meeting this morning. Uh, I'm, I'm taking responsibility of the five first hours of the day and then we we'll switch between the wife so we can actually balance out the work. Um, but um, I was sitting on the on the dining uh, dining table and listening how the teacher was actually <laughs> presenting and teaching. And then there was a, there's their second grade, so they're eight year old. Um, and there was a one guy who said his name on the chat. So, okay, so. Blah, blah, blah. your turn to talk and then yeah so so this and this tool what we're using i'm not going to name any names so this the, this isn't as good as the other one so can we actually switch on x and y and z <laughs> <laughs> <That's always good. laughs> but i mean in a way you can see that you, you can see analogies between our work like we are the same way hey this framework isn't as good i've seen this other framework can we switch <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, I'm just trying to do my job. I don't want to switch yeah. frameworks every other week. <laughs> exactly. exactly. <laughs> and the teacher is just trying to concentrate on teaching, not about yeah, the tooling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, which, yeah. which is a good don't reminder. Move my cheese. Don't exactly. move my cheese. Don't move my cheese. We just got this to work. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anyway, so that was just interesting. Also, the, obviously, the seeing this this young people who are completely uh, native, digi natives, uh, because they just yeah. they're just carrying the tablets and everything. They know 
yeah everything by it heart just works it? right like yeah, they exactly. swipe they exactly. and like the files are there there's like save a file what, what do you mean save it <laughs> yes yes exactly well, exactly the most kind of interesting thing that reminded me and let's get back on the articles uh, in a second but it reminded me on the weekend we had a eastern weekend a long weekend there was a few shows which they were broadcasting live because well they were set to broadcast live but there was no audience and the most amazing thing for a dj natives is actually the fact that is this happening now is this what, what? This is really happening now. Wow. It's not a video because they're so used to YouTube and everything Stream, else. Yeah, yeah. Everything is video. And it's like, really? They're, where are they? Well, they're in a studio in, in whatever location. Wow, well, that's amazing. I mean, that, it's never live. It's never live, right? Because like, it's, it's like the one thing that I find really odd. Like, for example, the New Year's Eve show. It's recorded two weeks earlier. And you're like, uh... Hold on, and now they're doing as if it was midnight and like toasting. You're like, what? it's not live. <laughs> exactly. It's like they, they, they've done it like two weeks back, like pretending as if. Yeah. Well, okay. I, have, I, I haven't heard about that one, but. Uh, really? No, it's not in that like, all the, Yes. Yeah. Like, yes, yeah. totally. Okay. Central totally. Europe is. Maybe here. it's a Dutch thing. And maybe. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Because why would the actors be at midnight in a studio? Or like no. the people, like they also have a home and kids and family and friends. <laughs> Fair yeah, point. True. Yeah, yeah. True. Okay. On that bombshell, let's move to the articles. <laughs> <laughs> let's get back on a chit chat. Imagine the... New Year's Eve, uh, that's like five to midnight. Hey, Vesa, I cannot in the office. Can you help me? And you're like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Related on digital natives, this one was the big one. And I think it from yesterday wasn't it yeah on monday and that they basically finally came out uh, from a microsoft teams and um, that we're finally getting the three by three screens and and yes we know that three by three isn't uh, the end goal we know we want to go to the 27 by 27 or whatever it is so everybody no, so will actually said I, I think someone said that at some point we'll be able to see all i mean which yeah, all. Yeah. i mean there yes. sure there will be a limit eventually at some point but it's going to be like like this is not the end stuff yeah, no. definitely not. Definitely not. Um, but it's a start of getting from the four screens to the nine, and then more and more after that. So that's that's pretty cool. So um, related no, I... at some point. Sorry, sorry. That means that we can do a SharePoint SharePoint at some point. No, ah, that's yes. true. That is true. Yes, classic SharePoint. Yes. On um, related no, I don't think that we have an announcement for that. But there was also an announcement that the custom backgrounds in Teams called calls are ro rolling out yeah. as well, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Nesta, I know you've used it on a few occasions with a virtual cam, right? Yeah. Uh, well, no. you... so I've used the virtual back. I've used the background and the background actually works better than the virtual cameras. So yeah. yeah, OK, but I mean, you are at Microsoft, so you have the inner ring and you are ahead of the game and you're like, yeah. you're not like normal people. Yeah, <laughs> it's not so I can just turn it on and it looks pretty good. Yeah. The thing that I wanted to ask you about, like, how do you guys feel about it? Because to me, it's like, okay, it's here, but as I've never really had the need for it. But but I want to like, how do you you guys feel about it? Um, With those XP, there you go. For, for me, it feels like a fun gimmick. I mean, it's not probably something that's going to change my life or something. But yeah. I can imagine that I have calls, and I, now I just turn on the, the blur effect. But I can imagine that there are calls where you might not want to show your room or wherever you're sitting. And then it's fairly easy to yeah. flip on, make it look something different. And maybe blur isn't giving you the effect because blur, like it says, it blurs your background. So maybe yeah. if there's a lot of clutter, it doesn't look really nice if you blur it. And then you can pick a nice picture and it looks OK. I mean, yeah, for me, it makes some sense. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And there was plenty of out of the box images, at least in my side, which I wasn't aware. Um, there's a new set of images apparently, which are rolling out as well. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, because there was only three images or five images out of the box recently, and these are. There completely... are now like two, four, six, eight, yeah. ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, oh, eighteen, twenty, oh, twenty, four, twenty, twenty-four. Well. Yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah, there are stuff. some tweets out there how you can upload your own images. There yeah, yeah. Yep. Data folder, okay. so it's not too hard. Yeah, you can definitely do that. Uh, and so you can definitely yes. do this. 
things. Now we're super small on the on the by the way because we're recording the screen sharing, so nobody can see what we're actually showing here. But that's fine. Anyways, <laughs> anyway, so let me actually get back on a, a screen which is suitable. Uh, let me actually get rid of that and let's actually concentrate on the. <laughs> we can get back, get back on the on the background uh, background play around uh, when we stop screen sharing, so we can actually do it. Yep. Now, okay. So uh, other things, just to mention, uh, share videos and engage with audiences using Microsoft Stream and SharePoint from Sebastian Fuland. Um, he's from Experiences BM team, as I am, and basically it's just the fact that uh, we have a better uh, stream webport, um, and you can actually do a, a recordings, uh, meeting recordings with your coworker remotely by adding the, uh, that there as well. So there's a original blog post in here, which is then pointing to another location the, the, uh, from Sebastian, but basically additional details on how things work. So really cool. Uh, announcing Microsoft 365 Community Docs. This one Ooh. went live yesterday, uh, last week, not yesterday. Uh, so um, this actually is, is a, a work what we've done with Mark uh, De Anderson for a long time. Uh, we, we we started collecting non-dev documentation and articles already more than a year ago, um, and the intention was all the time to get it out in the docs.microsoft.com. And now uh, then we actually internally aligned with our Marvel team, which might sound weird, but it's nothing related on the Marvel Studios, but it's a whatever uh, where the name is coming from. Um, but and they're basically responsible of the documentation process. Um, and now we're fully in sync and, and we basically have a first set of people who contributed their articles in this non-dev uh, side of the house, which is really, really cool. cool. Uh, so getting there and we'll do a similar kind of a monthly summary on what has been released uh, starting from next month. So should cool. be really cool. Nice. Now this one uh, came out earlier today, yesterday actually. You've been working on it. Monday was a vacation day in Netherlands. You should not work on that. <laughs> Just because the date, the date says April th April 13, it doesn't mean that it came out on April, on April 13. <laughs> Never trust whatever is on the internet. <laughs> yeah, true as well. I think it came out today. So yes, yeah, and you started writing that yesterday. That's what it is actually. Probably actually, so it wasn't the me. It's done by the team. I Gary, uh, actually. Okay. Okay. Anyway. Uh, but this is really around yeah. getting started with Office 365 CLI and PowerShell. Uh, I think it's a combination of running these two things, uh, right? Uh, what's the, the story behind of this? So the, the idea is like, um, imagine that you are either on a Mac or in a cloud or even on Windows and you want to use PowerShell Core. Yeah. And you want to, you, to use that to manage your, your tenant. Like currently yeah. CLI is the only option because that's the only yeah. thing that currently works on PowerShell Core. And yeah. Soon that will change, but for now, if you need something today, now, like that is the only option. And surprisingly, even on Windows, we see majority of our our users in CLI to actually run things in PowerShell. So that is also an interesting fact, like because like if you think about it, in Bash everything's string. In PowerShell, everything is an object that you can more yeah. easily parse, iterate yeah. through, and so, and so forth, and so on. So Bash is really like depending on what you want to do. Bash might not be the best experience, and PowerShell, especially PowerShell Card, which is, which is available now on every OS, that basically raises the bar and, on, and offers you to do more in, in Terminal. So, yep. combining best of both worlds, so to say. Ex exactly, exactly, exactly. And also empower everybody, no matter whether, whether you are on Windows, Linux, on a Mac, yeah, exactly. or on, on your box or in a cloud, you have the same experience. You can run scripts, you can run the same script in CI, CD on Linux, which yep. is often more effective or more efficient than Windows. So, so just like having a cohesive story across the board. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, uh, announcing Microsoft Craft Toolkit 1.2 with new Microsoft Teams channel picker component from Elias Young. Uh, so that's that's really cool. Uh, and they started a new blog, uh, blog post series, right? Yeah, this one. Yeah. Announcing a lap around Microsoft Craft Toolkit blog series. Really, really important thing. Uh, and a great that uh, the, the Craft team is actually doing this because the fact that you're shipping a software doesn't mean that people are using it. Um, so getting the, the real usage comes from the fact that you do blocking and a set of uh, articles where you explain uh, how to take advantage of these things. So super, super important. And create this list of familiar uh, names in the in the writers in here as well. Yeah. Now, um, uh, yeah. 
I like the the fact how it was announced, and I'm not not sure if which in which article or where it was, but basically they wrapped the whole thing up with like right line one one line of code to call yeah. graph. And I was yeah, like, yeah. yes, that is basically it. Like you put yeah. like one line on your page, and it does the auth data retrieval rent. Like everything's in there already. Yes. It saves Absolutely. you. So Absolutely. much time, not to mention like taking away the burden of going through the off, right? Yeah. So it's like really yeah. like whenever you want to do anything which is in graph, like this is the place to to go. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Now, uh, and this one was remote working trends meetings. Uh, so this one is a really nice article from Char Charit Spataro uh, and basically a summary on, on what I was seeing on the usage and growth and everything else. We're not going to deep dive in here from a timing perspective, uh, but basically how the world changes within the world have been impacting <laughs> the growth yeah. of the usage. And and these charts are pretty interesting as well. So a little bubble, bigger bubble, uh, bigger bubble, the biggest, biggest bubble. bubble. <laughs> 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 Some people really like bubbles, um, but they are cute from sizing. And uh, now um, let's get in here. My SharePoint stack, Mohammed Hassan's blog, uh, working with SharePoint, power, uh, SharePoint Online Modern Multilingual with the search keyword language um, and how to make those things work in a modern SharePoint web part. Nice articles on that one. So good combination of, of information and, and, and details. And this one is really cool from Xiao Mendes. I react my personal apps. A absolutely yeah. Brilliant implementation uh, and a really cool here. We can see actually my personal apps uh, uh, web port, which extends or is natively responsive. And then you can actually configure um, what are the, the things what you want to have uh, visible on your personal apps. So, what kind of rendering and it uses a lot of the SPFX controls, which we which are, have been releasing and all of that. So, really, really, really cool. Very stuff. rich. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like very, very nice experience. Like, there's no like type JSON string in here. No, it's all. Yep. UI settable and draggable. You can set it up basically being a user and not a dev. Yeah, and yeah. works as a personal app as well, which is pretty cool. So really, really cool stuff. So Microsoft Teams personal app. So you can actually then so store you your most accessed links directly in Teams um, as a personal app. That's actually a pretty cool idea. Your, so basically it's your qu quick launch in a way. Yes, kind of in, in, huh. in Teams. Now everywhere there there is a favorites functionality in browser, but but okay. So there's a Teams desktop. This would be our and quick uh, quick launch uh, on the left menu as an example. Cool cool idea. Really cool idea. Good. Uh, moving on to things. Uh, script to update metadata term instances in all SharePoint documents and folders from Joel Rodriguez. Uh, so just again, good set of scripts and explaining how things are working. So uh, using BMP PowerShell. So let's not deep dive on things from a timing perspective. We had a lot of articles. Uh, people seem to have more time to write uh, nowadays. Yeah. Uh, That's good. Yes, that is absolutely good. Gautam Seth, how to integrate BMP SPFX React control inside of the property bank controls data control. So really cool sign up as well, how to get, really take advantage of the BMP SPFX controls in the Teams or SharePoint implementation. Uh, this one was an Outlook adding with SharePoint framework, store custom metadata within your mail. Uh, really cool setup from Marcus Miller. Um, and this is, I think, yeah, so this is a multi-part series. And this is the last part uh, where we basically then finalize the sample and this is really around storing the emails in SharePoint uh, using an application uh, in the in the Outlook web access. So really cool stuff and using graph of course. So easiest way to access the data. Uh, access Microsoft Graph API using SPFX with secured Azure function. So really cool stuff from HS Hassan. Uh, so again, explanation, a lot of details on the blog post on how to make things happen, which is really good. The only downside obviously with pictures um, is that they get outdated so fast because we keep on evolving uh, UX uh, so fast in Azure. Stop side changing the UI. Exactly. <laughs> Jarpas uh, Forst from Valo Intranet, quick tip, understanding the unknown user issue in Microsoft Teams, so understanding what is the unknown user, how does it actually work and how to get to that, so good information as well. Uh, exploring taxonomy mapping in a PMP transformation, this is basically when we are transforming classic SharePoint pages to a modern SharePoint experiences, you can do this taxonomy mapping uh, in between. Um, and it's really cool, so um, Bob Bollock has been one of the 
let's say, principal writers of these capabilities, the transformation capabilities. And I think he was the one who wrote uh, from SharePoint 2010, publishing pages transform the, the modern bear pages using the existing APIs from BERT. So cool. really, really cool stuff. That is because cool. then again, transform from 2010 to the cloud. And that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, SharePoint framework facelift of drop downs with then Office UI fabric icons from Nandeep. Really cool stuff as well. So uh, how do you use those icons? How do I install multiple node versions on my Windows computer? Quite important as well from Patrick Lambert uh, because you might be running multiple versions and NVM is probably the easiest way to make yep. that happen. Sure, using a Docker would be one option, but it might get problematic, but NVM absolutely works. Lifesaver. Absolutely, yep. absolutely. Using Teams Slice Meeting for your virtual events, nice summary on, on how to get started on, on using things, uh, a non-dev topic, uh, definitely, but uh, really, really important uh, that how to take advantage of this. And then from Elio, uh, building a busy light, uh, busy light to show your Microsoft Teams presence. That's actually pretty cool. And using the, the presence graph APIs, right? Yep. Exactly, yes, yes. The only downside is that cable in his setup, but hey. <laughs> that could be a battery. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, and then we yeah. have four different videos. So adding multiple web parts to SPFX solution, basics. But again, basics are the ones where people need. So it's really good that these kind of videos are actually being done because when you search, how do I do this? It's good to have a video or an article, how to make this happen from people giant. Um, Paolo had a, a new video as well, working with uh, BMP JS uh, and the files. And one of the things what people noticed that he has actually had a haircut. So um, I think that was Waldex comment as well. So <laughs> SPFX, jQuery, <laughs> all covers <it. laughs> But it's good that people are noticing and how to write a, a, a SPFS uh, jQuery or carousel web part, uh, quite typical setup for what people are asking. And then a final video from John Liu related on how to, how to sketch, schedule a Microsoft Teams meeting uh, with anyone at any time. So that's pretty cool as well, using the, the Microsoft Automate, Power Automate, not Microsoft Automate, Power Automate. Power Automate. <laughs> Power <laughs> Automate. <laughs> Whatever build, it's called. Build a flow. <laughs> Use Power Automate to build a flow that's has user meeting. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Now let me actually stop the, the screen sharing and now we can play with the backgrounds. Uh, so I can actually get uh, get something fancy here. Of course. Uh, da, 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 da. Looks like, like I'm in the office now. I can be in the office as well. Contemporary office. There you go. Uh, I can be oh, in the Microsoft office as well. So there we go. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, you are there with Jax, right? Yeah, Jax is over there, and, and there's Ed, who is my manager, and Jeremy Kelly, who owns our Graph APIs, uh, the SharePoint, the OneDrive Graph APIs, and I think Stephen is there as well. Luca is missing from this meeting. So get back to home. You shouldn't be there. No. <laughs> um, oh, oh my God, there work. Yes, exactly. <laughs> there we go. Multiply. Cool stuff. <laughs> okay, let's do that one, and then we'll actually concentrate on something else. Hey, now, uh, <laughs> hey, we can be at the same place. Oh, we can. Okay. Yeah. I yeah. Can. Yeah. Let's go. yeah. There ah. we go. Everybody is There we go. <laughs> good, good. Um, so what's happening with this week? Uh, any any changes or is it a crown hot day? Crown hot day? <laughs> Just repeating, repeating, repeating. <laughs> well, we lost Monday, so exactly. Uh, yeah. I think the rest of the week is just catching up of losing a day. For, <laughs> yes. for <the> <laughs> <laughs> that is true. For some reason, I still got emails from clients. I still have things that I want to figure out. There's still community stuff to build. So, yep. yeah. So it's probably going to be a catch-up week, but yeah. Yeah, and we lost Friday last week as well, right? Yeah, that was off in, in yeah Netherlands as well. Yeah. Lost, lost, yeah. lost. What does it mean? Yeah, that's true. As well. <laughs> so I enjoyed my garden and some beer. 
not too bad. Any good, any any good beer hints? Uh, what would be our favorites? Uh, let's let's go off the off the topic. <laughs> Beers. Uh, usually... I heard. I heard that Netherlands has a good uh, or Dutch uh, Dutch beers. No, no. no Belgian no, beers. No, no, no. Belgian. Belgian beers. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. fine. Almost the same, but. No, 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 well, yeah, so on the sea live front, we will keep going. Uh, we have still plenty. So we have just done done a release, new preview with uh, additional reports, additional commands. And I think we have still, like, I don't know how many PRs to go, and probably we'll get some more PRs. Well, uh, let's go. Yeah, there you go. So, so there is always like more work than hours in a day, which is yeah, which, which, which in a way is great. It's great to be in a place where we can, where there's always something new for us to ship to show there are there are still some things that we need to address or we can address so yeah. that is uh, um i like that i like the fact that um and also the fact that we get so much help from from everyone else like that yeah. is really really the best part of working on cli if yeah. you ask me so so on that one and i i know that we're running out of time uh but in a few minutes uh we, we should actually make a proper show and talk about that one the learnings around the open source projects and and open source cli is a really good example it took a long time the stuff get moving but now it's actually moving yeah. uh really nicely and there's multiple people who are coordinating the work and there's there's tens and tens of people con contributing um any any learnings uh from your side uh, on the running the open source projects in, in a few minutes um it's very much ri rinse and repeat you need to show yeah. up every every week um and it's very much it's exact it's it's exactly the same no matter what you build and it's very the a typical thing that developers do yeah. when you build something for someone you need to communicate 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 to the point where if you like i am repeating myself and everybody knows no like no, i don't. live and yep. and breathe cli everybody yep. else don't everybody else has their full-time job and maybe they will see a tweet maybe they will hear about us um, um talk about it maybe they will see a post but typically they won't just because that is on top of my head doesn't make it on top of anyone else's yep. head. So I yeah. need to, and and basically that is the message also for us as a team who manages that, rinse and repeat, like really repeat the basic, explain why, explain what it solves, what problem it solves, yep. because we yeah. know this, nobody else does. Yep. And it's a long game. Like you need to think about not, not, not days and weeks, but really months and years. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So I actually have a colleague. He's been doing Office 365 for ages. He got a Mac, I think, two or three months ago. And last week he was like, "Yeah, I want to do this, but I don't. I, I cannot run PowerShell." And I was like, "There's CLI. You can do that for. for it, yeah. It's been out there, but and he was like, "Oh, never heard of it." And I shouted, yeah. like, "Oh man, this is exactly kind of exactly and exactly. I was like, exactly. Exactly. How haven't you heard of it? I mean, and but it's 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 one of those things where we. And and definitely we'll we'll uh, schedule a separate talk and talk about these things. But we, we saw the same thing also with everything else on the BMP side of the house. So the BMP PowerShell, BMP side score. Yeah. BMP PowerShell is an awesome example. It took years it yeah. to catch on, and now it's de facto way of manage, manipulating everything. And yeah. the usage is just millions and millions and millions of commands or executions in every single day. It's just mind blowing. Uh, or the same actually applies even for SharePoint Framework, which isn't open source, but again, rinse and repeat. Um, yeah. To be able to make stuff, stuff, stuff available, you need to rinse and repeat and make it in front of everybody's face all the time so that people understand the yep. value out of it that they yeah. are willing to commit the time to actually spend on learning it and now it and actually also, goes nicely so exactly but but also very much explain the basic like how do i get it how do i start it how do i do auth how yeah. do i update it like really the simple things but like often turn out to be the most complex things at all like i yeah. work in powershell maybe once every two two months like basically, you know, like every time, okay, like my command lists are from three months back. How do I update them? Yep. I don't know. Yep. Uh, so yep. I, I I have basically a one note tab where I have all the, the, the commands, are, but it's not like update this. No, it's like you have to do this with this, with this argument. Like it's a complex thing. Yep. 
right? It's like, and if you don't do it every day or every week, like you will not remember that because it's not intuitive. Yeah. And it just yeah. like proves like a point, like the basics, rinse and repeat, right? Yeah. So there will be one, two. I ran out of time. <laughs> <laughs> we <do> it, right? <laughs> no, but it's like also, also another thing that is important is that you need to get things out of your head. Like yeah. you need to help others to help you. So yeah. everything from planning, ideas, communication, it cannot be in your head. As much as you'd love to code, if yeah. you want others to help you, you need to spend even more time or on getting out the to-do list or the things you'd like to see changes. Because think about it. Yeah. If I don't know the project and I have an, an hour off, I can spend the hour to go through your code and then by the time I can help, the time is gone. Yeah. Or I will see exactly, I can help in this area and I will do exactly that. And by the end of the hour, you have a PR. Yeah, but the, it's the same with the SP Dev Docs, right? There is this really large button saying, make an edit. So if you spot a typo, it's just exactly. click the button, fix yeah. the typo, and you're done. And yeah. it's the same effort as reporting an issue saying on this page there is something wrong as then to yeah. fix it yourself. It's the same with the CLI. If I want to work on a, a, a new command, there is this nice format that states you need to do this, you need to implement that. and for the basic commands, it takes like an hour, maybe two, to implement your very first command. And that yeah. really is helpful to get you started. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Now we're running out of time because Abby has a commitment right now. So <laughs> thank you, Abby, for that one. And thank you, Walek, once again. Uh, thank we'll you, Asa. We'll with a new BNP Weekly within a week. And sorry for those, by the way, who were waiting this to go live on Tuesday. It doesn't. It goes live on Wednesday because Monday was off. It's Tuesday now. Yeah. So. <laughs> But thank you, Abby. Thank you, Waldek. Thanks and for we'll come me. back with a new one. Yeah. Thanks. We'll we'll definitely bring you in the future as well. See you. Cool. See you <laughs> next week. Bye. Bye. Thank bye. you. Bye.